Hello, my name is G.P. Schmall. I'm with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, and I'm the superintendent of the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary. The Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary is a marine protected area, uh, something very similar to a national park, except out in the, out in the water. Uh, most people aren't aware that um, a lot of these areas even exist, but the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary protects a incredibly healthy and incredibly important coral reef ecosystem located about 100 miles offshore of the uh, coast of Texas in Louisiana. It's about uh, 56 square miles in size, uh, and it protects uh, three individual bank features, the East Flower Garden Bank, West Flower Garden Bank, and uh, another feature called Stetson Bank. All of these areas were recognized early on as being very important, as being very um, providing uh, critical habitat for a variety of uh, uh, communities, biological communities, and fish species of recreational and commercial importance. And in 1992, it was designated as a national marine sanctuary. It's one of a, a system of 14 national marine sanctuaries and marine national monuments uh, that are in the in the waters of the uh, of the United States. We have uh, just recently proposed uh, an expansion of the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary, and we feel it's important and justified because. Uh, even though these areas have been protected for um, uh, quite a while now, there are, they are only three of dozens of uh, similar reefs, banks, and other features in the northern Gulf of Mexico. And over uh, the last um, oh, 30 years or so, there's been a, um, a, a quite a bit of research, exploration, discovery, and um, a characterization of, of many of these features that have uh, reinforced the importance of them and, and also suggested that they are in need of additional protection and management. I often get the question of, of what exactly is a national marine sanctuary. Um, many people, because of the, of the name sanctuary, um, uh, it sort of implies that uh, no activities at all can, can happen within those areas. Uh, and, and even though uh, that what maybe is what the common use of uh, the word sanctuary is, a national marine sanctuary was actually is set up to allow for a variety of, of uses and activities that, uh, that can occur, uh, as long as they are compatible with the primary objective of protecting the resources that are out there. So for example, uh, at the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary, one of the primary concerns was the impact of anchoring. So, Anchoring is prohibited within uh, the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary. Um, and, um, and that's for obvious reasons, because the sensitive coral communities uh, are very, uh, very subject to, to injury from, uh, from dropping anchors. But what the sanctuary does, in, this, in the case of the Flower Garden Banks, is to provide for mooring buoys. And we've installed uh, a number of mooring buoys out at the coral reef at the Flower Gardens to, to allow people to, uh, to access the area, uh, to moor up to, the, uh, to these buoys so they don't have to drop their anchor in order to, to access the area. And so uh, they go out there uh, commonly to scuba dive. Uh, it is a very becoming a very popular scuba diving destination because it's an area that you can not only see healthy corals, but you can have uh, a, a good chance of seeing uh, uh, some large animals like manta rays, whale sharks, and several species of sea turtles. So uh, scuba diving is fine, um, but taking things, um, again, um, is not. Um, so you can take pictures, but you uh, are prohibited from taking any kind of um, um, animals of any sort, you know, shells, uh, invertebrates, corals, anything like that. Um, we also, uh, people are sometimes uh, surprised to learn that we allow fishing within the National Marine Sanctuary at the Flower Garden Banks, um, but by hook and line fishing only. Certain types of um, fishing uh, gear can cause uh, significant injury, again, to the coral reefs and, and sensitive biological communities. Uh, things like, a, such as trawling or putting uh, traps or bottom long lines. Those types of um, fishing activities are prohibited within the sanctuary. And spear fishing is uh, prohibited as, as well. But hook and line fishing, both commercial and recreational, um, is allowed in the sanctuary. It, uh, we even uh, allow for certain other types of more uh, industrial activity. There, as you know, this part of the Gulf of Mexico is a, um, one of the most heavily developed areas for offshore oil and gas exploration, development, and production in the world. We have um, uh, 
set up our regulations such that certain even certain oil and gas activities can can occur inside the in, inside the National Marine Sanctuary. Again, as long as it's set back away from the sensitive communities, and as long as other um, uh, types of their uh, activities such as uh, discharge are restricted or, mod or modified. So the sanctuary um, provides a, a level of protection, but it does not prohibit all uses. And in fact, we encourage and want people to see and enjoy uh, the resources that are out there and the resources that why these areas were designated as national marine sanctuaries to begin with. So uh, in June of uh, this year of 2016, uh, NOAA, put forward a, um, a proposal to expand the sanctuary, released a draft environmental impact statement, and um, we have uh, suggested a range of five alternatives that can, should be considered in this expansion, and we have selected uh, one of those alternatives as what we refer to as our preferred alternative. Here we have a map of the northern Gulf of Mexico, and you can see here in this, um, in this inset um, the area of Texas, Louisiana, Houston is located here, New Orleans over here, Galveston, Texas, where our offices are, are located just about here. And if you travel um, directly south of the, of the line between, the state line between Texas and Louisiana, 100 miles offshore, you will eventually intersect uh, the two areas that are known as the Flower Garden Banks. And um, they, are, they are shown here in yellow, and a smaller area up to the, um, up to the left, known as Stetson Bank. This is the, um, in our range of alternatives for expansion, uh, we have included uh, essentially a no action al alternative, which means that we would not expand. We would just contain the same areas that um, are already um, existing in the National Marine Sanctuary. And so the, uh, the lighter blue color is uh, relatively shallow as you move from the, the coastline of Texas, Louisiana, it drops gradually off. Uh, to an area about 100 miles offshore, and then it starts to drop very quickly into the deeper waters of the Gulf of Mexico. So that's uh, our first alternative, is essentially to, to keep things as they are. Our second alternative would add nine additional reefs and banks in the vicinity of the, uh, of the flower garden banks. Um, again, the, uh, for orientation, these two areas here are the existing east and west flower garden bank. You'll notice that um, for this, uh, uh, the East Flower Garden Bank here uh, has been enlarged quite, um, quite a lot by this, in this alternative because of a, a very unique reef feature that occurs to the, um, uh, to the west of this, of this particular feature. It would also include eight additional banks going to the east, and they, um, uh, and they vary uh, slightly in, in um, in the way they have developed and the types of bi biological communities that exist there, but in, in lots of ways they are very similar too. These are our coral communities, they are, but they are different than the types of shallow water coral reefs that uh, people might be uh, familiar with in, um, uh, in the Florida Keys or in shallow areas of the, of the Caribbean. Uh, but they're no less important than these shallow areas, but they, are, they have different types of, of coral communities that exist there. We took that suggestion and uh, built on it to come up with alternative three, which we actually uh, have identified as our preferred alternative. And you can see here that um, in addition to the nine banks that were identified in alternative two, there are six additional features that also have been added for this alternative. And this, um, we believe, uh, would provide a level of protection to, uh, throughout this range along the edge of the continental shelf in this part of the Gulf of Mexico that would uh, protect these areas for, uh, for generations to come from, uh, from a variety of potential impacts, uh, re mostly related to uh, activities that may disturb the seafloor. Um, anchoring is one of those major impacts. Uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of vessel traffic in this region, uh, huge ships that are passing back and forth um, uh, every day, uh, going in and out of the port of Houston, the port of New Orleans, and other areas in the, in the Gulf of Mexico and throughout the Gulf, uh, uh, throughout the Gulf region. 
Um, some of those ships uh, have been known to come into these shallower areas and drop their anchors for whatever reason. And um, as you can imagine, if this is a 900 or 1,000 foot freighter, dropping an anchor can uh, have devastating impacts on a, um, on a sensitive coral community such as that exist here. So this is the one that, uh, that NOAA has pr proposed that it's, as its preferred alternative. Uh, for the fourth alternative, um, we stepped back a bit and took a, a broader view of the, of the geographic area of the northern Gulf of Mexico and included not just the area off of Texas and Louisiana that we have been uh, looking at in alternatives one through three, but looked at an area that um, goes all the way over to um, the, the areas off of Mississippi and Alabama. This is because this entire region is very similar in, um, in the types of biological communities that exist there. Um, the, uh, we term them as it's in the same bioregion uh, within all this area. And so those, uh, the communities that exist there are very similar. Um, these areas off of Mississippi and Alabama are known as the pinnacles. And they're quite well known to, um, uh, to people and especially uh, fishermen that, um, that work off there because they are very productive marine habitats and very important, again, as critical habitat for a variety of, of fish species. We also include in this alternative some areas that start uh, go, are identified off on the continental, what's known as the continental slope. This is the area that starts dropping off very quickly into the deep parts of the Gulf of Mexico. And these are very unique areas on, uh, as well. These are true deep coral communities. The, and these corals actually exist in depths that where hardly any light at all penetrates. Uh, some of these areas are in essentially totally dark. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that uh, there are still quite thriving communities in, in areas in the ocean that, uh, were, that receive no light. But, uh, but these are also very important and, and very productive. And then our fifth and final alternative builds on this alternative four slightly by adding some additional areas scattered throughout the, in, this entire region. And there are, are quite a few uh, more deep water coral areas that have been uh, identified for this alternative, as well as some, some, uh, some areas in the um, original area looked at in alternative two and three um, that were not considered um, uh, high enough um, quality to be included in the preferred alternative. And this, I might also mention, includes uh, several uh, underwater shipwreck sites that are historically important, um, such as uh, one that occurs right off of Galveston is the wreck of the, uh, the USS Hatteras, which was uh, sunk during the, the Civil War uh, during the uh, Battle of Galveston in 1863. I might also mention that um, one reason that this area off of Mississippi, Alabama, and the eastern part of L Louisiana is so important because this is the area that was directly affected by the, uh, by the oil spill as a result of the Deepwater Horizon uh, BP oil spill incident. And some of these areas actually were Im directly impacted by, those, by that oil spill. And we believe that by putting them under a protective nature uh, will allow them to recover more quickly and allow and provide a, a, a method that we can uh, follow the recovery and do research on the recovery of, from oil spill impacts. So that's the, uh, that's the range of alternatives that we have uh, put forward. Uh, we are encouraging and soliciting um, the public to, to, review these, uh, to, to review this proposal and to give us comments and feedback on, on what you think about it. Uh, the public comment period is open through August the 19th. And um, after that point, we will take uh, the information that we've received from that uh, public comment period and, and come up with a final proposal that we will uh, hopefully um, uh, be able to publish within the next 18 to 24 months. Mm -hmm.